finally folks, finally dear ones, I want to conclude why I'm spending so much time talking about precession. What is so important about precession that M is just rambling on and on and on and going off in all these different tangents. Uh, let me explain myself here. You know the principle of as above, so below. So below as above. Uh, this really is so consistent. I want to bring it to a very large degree right now in front of you and consider precession as being possibly the reason, the driver for all life, the reason why we exist, the reason why the, we have seasons, the reason why life can be here is because of precession. Hang on a second. This is not at all obvious. I understand. Let's take the case of the Earth just spinning without a precession. It's not rubbing up against anything. And of course, precession, it's leaning over just slightly. It's not a big wobble, folks. It's just leaning over a little bit. I'm not sure of the exact, okay, but um, it, it's really sort of in an imbalanced state when it's like that because of the energies, the net effect of the energies coming in from all directions. We talked about that. But what does it do? It kind of abrades, rubs up against this space-time uh, because the way that it's designed is supposed to be straight up. It's not supposed to be leaning. And so we're kind of leaning and we're kind of creating a, a vacuum on the vacuum on the, on the other side there a little bit in a very slow fashion. And that creates dynamics, additional dynamics to having a huge planet rumble through space-time at uh, one-tenth of the speed of light, which we do. But back onto the plan here. Uh, now, let's, let's take the case of a human. As above, so below. Let's go right down to the human level so that we can understand it. Let's say you go through your life and you really can't in your DNA find a way to make anybody upset. Or you're just a very nonviolent, very peaceful person you cannot rub anybody the wrong way. It's just not in your makeup. And we've all met several people. You may be one of these people. Very dear, sweet people, but they never make the paper. You know what I'm saying? They never make the headlines. They are not leaders. These are people that will work the same job in an office for 40 years and finally retire. Nobody even knew, knows hardly what they were doing the whole time. Um, but they were very nice, very polite, very courteous people. They were kind to animals and children and, and all of that, right? And they, they die never having really examined themselves, never really having any kind of a personal drama story or a, a real trauma to even really add to the, to the life story of the rest of us. So it takes, I believe, in the human case, it takes an imbalance. Let's say somebody likes to put, you know, safety pins all in their face and they shave their head one way and they like to talk loud like me right now from the camera and, you know, they like to shake things up. They're not satisfied, in other words, in some degree. And uh, they like to go to protest rallies. Or they're very opinionated. Uh, they like to be on uh, so social media, not maybe to talk about something to, to talk about something controversial, but to talk, to express themselves. Hey, look at me, look at me. They have a push, they have a drive. That's a little bit of an imbalance the way I'm looking at it right now, energetically. They're just a little eh, off to the side a bit. And they see life from their unique quirk, their unique aspect, okay? Now, where it gets pertinent with the precession, isn't the world doing this? It is just, uh, and it's going along. And this, this causes all kinds of dynamics to roil up around it with the, with the space time that's going on, the vacuum going on, and all of those little PSUs, those little clock units, which are the building blocks of everything, are in there just like going, wow, you know, you're seeing this huge planet ramming into them and going, uh, you know, and these are indestructible, of course, these are not matter. These are energy sources, and we're, it's, it's all right here. It's, it's in the spaces, it's in me, it's in you. We're expressing through it. Okay, so that's the idea. When we're like, uh, abrading it, even just a slight amount, 
and we're going at one tenth of the speed of light, that tends to create some differences in dynamics, right? So what I see it happen, what I see occurring is we got the possibility of things like wind and rain and snow, precipitation, clouds, uh, undulations like seasons, because everybody's thrown off kilter, but it's done so slowly that eventually when the world, when the earth in its formation finally stabilized and settled out, uh, this precession was so slow that it, it could make rhythms out of this and everything in the universe is dancing, you know? I mean, according to BD, I mean, everything is a flow, it's a dance, it's a choreography, a grand, great choreography, just like what we produce on our musical stages. No difference. So precession is bringing the imbalance, the necessary imbalance to create all of this, all of this richness of life, and that all of us have our, our, our little quirks as well. You dig deep enough, there is nobody that doesn't have quirks, <laughs> as it turns out. But, I mean, we don't need to go on about that. So, we've got a lot to thank for pre-session here, and this is why I drag you through all of these different lectures to get to this point, to get to this point of conclusion that, you know, don't just overlook this topic. This is the driver and for these reasons, this is the driver for BD, this is the driver for biodynamics and of human culture and of the super tech and the sacred tech. And there are being things that are sacred because there are things that we do not consider sacred. We have duality as a result. All of these things, you'll consider this, think about it. The entire universe is in some sort of imbalance. And let's just say, let's just confidently say that as a whole, it's in a perfect kind of a rhythm or a dance or a balance. But inside, it's nothing but violence and chaos. You look at the quotes of John Foster Wheeler and Paul Dirac and all of these greats that came before Nassim Haderman, and they're all talking about it. Uh, Einstein started getting there, but he, he kind of ran out of fuel there before he finally came to these conclusions. But all of the greats, came to this point as uh, you know the ones that were more modern as 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 they built on Maxwell and they built on all of these other people that came before they started realizing hey something's out here something's not working with the modern physics calculations we've got this let's just dump it into dark energy but actually what we are talking about is the fact that there this vacuum exists and we're we are now embracing it formalizing it theorizing it, doing experiments with it, coming out with products in it, and it does explain all of what goes on in life. And so I want to just tie all of this unified stuff in with the BD and not to belabor, not to not to bore you too much, but this is how it all dances together, all of these things that I'm talking about, including the sacred technology of the Ice Age, and that there was an Ice Age with super technology, sacred technology, people that were living very advanced because just before the cataclysm, they were living like this for about 2,000 years, something like that, come and give and take, depending on where you were in the world. So why wouldn't they flourish? Why wouldn't they thrive and have this technology just like we do? So anyway, this is kind of like encapsulating the entire two entire courses all in one in one lecture but you kind of get the idea i hope so anyway precession the driver for it all this is why i call precession the daddy rhythm this is the big daddy out there that uh lays the canvas for all the rest of them okay so hope you enjoyed it on with the next enjoy your sweet day